Hi everyone, it's Helen here and thank you very much for joining me for today's tutorial. So today we're going to be putting together the small shadow box. I just got these two together so that you can have a size comparison. This one was the large one from my um, Winter Sparkle collection. This has sold out but I've got all of my fingers crossed that Craft Stash will get these back in stock as soon as possible. And when they are, I'll put them on my social media and on the community tabs here so you know when this is back because I've had loads of questions about this one. So this this is the size comparison and today we're going to be working on this one so one of my last videos we made this small landscape album here so I need to have a box to pop it into so we're going to be making that today and I'll be sticking with the Bohemian Days papers as well just so it matches the album perfectly so here is the die set so let's go through with the cutting guide so I have die cut four of these and I'm about to show you how I made this one smaller so I've glued these all together already but what I'm about to show you um, will show you how to get to this particular stage and I've also die cut one hinge from here as well and I've die cut my little um, silver mirror card borders and then I have mats for these that are stitched as well so I've got those ready there is also a manual cut of two of these so this is for the front and the back so it's five and a half by eight and a quarter and I've just made a mat here that is a five and a quarter by eight and we're going to be popping in a window on the front so I'll be showing you exactly how to do that as well okay so we're going to be playing with a pink piece of paper today sorry not paper card and we have this little notch here so this is the length where we have to trim that down but I don't really want to have all of this excess that could be wasted so I'm going to scoot my cardstock down I'm going to make sure that my line is on the card so I'm just going to run this through so nothing gets cut out here and I'm not really wasting any of this cardstock here I get to keep all that and if you're really really lucky which I have done this before you can die cut you can die cut it like that, run it through, turn the cardstock around and then you can do exactly the same on the other side so you can get two pieces from the one A4 sheet. Okay there we go and it's made a little notch for you there. I'm just going to add a little pencil line, it's just by the S, S is for small, that is where we need to trim. If you find it easier to add a little pencil mark over the um, the scored line notch, then if you find that easier, then do so. But this is what I'm talking about for this piece here. Turn that around and there is enough space for you to do another cut just like so. And that will make sure that you're not wasting any of your cardstock. Okay, so you need to make two of these and just keep two of the long ones as is. If you want to make a square one, you can make four of these or just make four of the long ones as well. Right, so now we're ready for our short piece to be put together. So grab yourself a bone folder and then press all of those score lines. And the great thing about this die set is it makes a really good project and there's hardly any brain work that you need to put into this and concentration in getting every piece cut and score line put in the right place and it's going to be a lot faster as well so you can make multiples of these as well so I'm going to take this side here with the tapered end and it's uh, smaller than this one and I'm going to put some glue just on the inside part there going to be using um, book binding glue today and then press that closed and then I like to just give it a little tap as well a little bit of a wobble just to make sure that that has taken there we go and if you wanted to make these for advent calendars or other lovely Christmas projects then you can do as well 
and they're also perfect if you're making for uh, making to sell at craft fairs and and shows and things like that as well as giving away to relatives and here is a quick example here using the winter sparkle uh, winter scenes absolutely love this one and that is made with some white cardstock and this is what it looks like when it's in a square version okay so now i'm going to pop that aside because i'm going to make a pink one next i think so we're going to move back now to our blue ones and we're going to assemble this so we're going to have all of our little tabs pointing the same way just like that they're going to be glued together just like so and we're going to have long short long and then short there's not enough room to see everything in a one long line but we will end up with one big long line so i'm going to add glue just to the bottom of this tab just there I'm going to line that up with the back end of this one slightly press down turn it over to make sure that is all on straight and then what I like to do is just to pinch that slightly so I can get my finger in and press that down nicely otherwise I will give myself a paper cut just there don't ask me how I found that out and then we're going to move on to our longer piece now and do exactly the same until we have everything joined together okay so we have a nice long line now we can start folding this up so we have the nice side here which is going to be the front and the back end side with all of the funny looking bits so that's going to obviously be the bottom and these need to tuck into these bottom bits as we go along and this corner here needs to tuck inside there too so actually no these bottom bits need to go on the outside it's the top bits that need to go in and if you want to you can just add a little bit of glue just there in the corner to hold that in place okay it will kind of want to swish around so just be patient with it until we kind of get the last one in and then it won't want to move about so much and I forgot to fold this over so add our glue here and that gets tucked inside there There we have our shadow frame box almost complete. You can use that for anything you want. You can make some lovely hanging snowflakes in there and have that completely see through. So there's loads of different things that you can do with this album. Uh, sorry, the shadow box. So that's gonna need a little bit of time there just to dry properly. So let's move on to our lid. So I gave you the measurements for this at the beginning but here they are again five and a half by eight and a quarter so this is actually the width of an a4 sheet of card so i have basically just cut it down to five and a half segments so i didn't have to cut it on this edge at all okay so let's go over to the mat now that measures five and a quarter by eight and if you and then I'm going to be moving on to a nesting die set. Now, Craft Stash have a whole ton of different types of nesting die sets. Just type in nested die set, any shape you want, or just a nested die set, and you will come up with lots and lots of choices to choose from. Some of them will be stitched, some of them will be straight edge. There's just so many choices. So I have in my stash the oval set, uh, super size nestables. There we go. And I have chosen two. What I've done is I've popped them onto there and we need to make an allowance for the hinge not to be seen through the window. And I'm going to die cut this in the center with the smallest of the two that I've chosen. So I'm gonna cut that out now. Okay, if you do need to cut it out twice because it's just done the first layer, then there will be an easy indentation for you to take off the first layer that's come away 
and then pop this in again to cut the next layer so you're not going to be trying to guess again where it goes there'll be a clear markings there so I'm going to pop that aside we're going to make some uh, a frame now so we'll be using the same dies we've just used and you can use a bit of tape if you feel like it's um, going to move about looks about even sorry about the reflection it's uh, I guess it's called mirror stock mirror card stock for a reason okay so here is my oval that is going to fit perfectly over the aperture that we have just created there we go. isn't that lovely wouldn't that make a lovely card frame on now we're going to add some acetate behind I like to use the paper mania 12 by 12 sheets I've always got something cut down in the pack so I, everything that I use I pop back in I'm just going to you can use a paper trimmer for this I'm just going to use my scissors turn that over just going to add glue I recommend using red tape for this because the acetate can become quite static and your glue can just go into funny places where you don't want it to go and then it's almost impossible to get back off again so I'm keeping the glue well away from the aperture around here because I don't fancy cleaning up anything that goes near it and will become visible so this is good enough for me there we go and there we have our acetate window so let's add now our hinge so I'm just going to add glue to this end again using the glue over red tape will definitely prolong the life of how long that your uh, box or project is going to stay together I have made albums with red glue before on other projects and it really doesn't stand the test of time and um, with mini albums you really want them to stand the test of time so I definitely re recommend glue and if you can grab yourself some archival safe glue I know uh, scotch quick dry uh, scotch quick dry glue um, is acid free that will be even better because some glues just turn yellow but I haven't experienced yellowing too badly with any of the wet glues but um, we will see in 10 years time I guess right so we have our lid now with the hinge that's going to be popped onto there and we're just going to turn this over now and we are going to add glue to the back here this is really going to make it super sturdy and help it keep its shape so if it does kind of look a bit skewed you can just squish it and get it to the right shape there we go turn that over we have our shadow box again so many ideas on what you can make with this right so let's get this popped on now doesn't that look wonderful I love that I love that and that's going to open up just like that love it so let's add glue now just to the inside of this hinge and yes uh, adding wet glue to acetate or any kind of plastic will take a little bit of uh, extra time to dry as well
Okay, once you're happy that's in the right place, I'm just going to press that down. It's going to help get that popped into place. And we have our hinge. It is slightly visible, but I have made sure that I've done the hinge out of the same colour cardstock as the rest of the box. But don't do that. <laughs> It's not ready to be opened yet. So whilst that is drying, we are going to add our mats now. So I've got some more of the Bohemian Days papers and I'm just going to add them on there. And I use the mats that come with the die set to trim those down as well. Okay, just put the last one on now and that covers the hinge and that should be safe enough now for me to open the lid. Almost just that. I'm just gonna add a bit more glue because I separated it with my little boo-boo. I'm going to just add a little bit more glue just to this corner here. And press that in. That should be okay. I'm going to give that a good five minutes now just to dry. So this is, it actually looks like a bit like a tissue box, doesn't it? You could really make a tissue box using this too. Anyway, this is going to now fit the large, uh, not the large, the small album and as it's in landscape I'll be using this in landscape as well I'm going to give that five minutes okay so I'm just going to glue these on now in the middle not the middle the frame section okay I'm happy with that and if you really want to you can cover this again if you have some um, rectangle nesting dies you can create something here on the inside and I'm just going to quickly glue these on to the framework Okay, just popping on my last one here. And now I can pop my album inside. Okay, in it goes. There we go. I'm really glad I've got somewhere to keep this because I've been trying to keep it protected from getting squished and squashed. And now it has its own box. So all I need to do now with this one is just to um, make this inside look pretty and cover the front. I'm thinking of adding a kinetic element to the front. There's a little bit of room there for some dimension on the front there and it's going to be perfect. Or I could even just add one of these ovals as well. Not sure. We can have loads of fun with decorating. That's what I want to use my brain power for, not for trying to work out all of these measurements and getting it right every single time for multiple cuts. So that is going to be used on its side. There we go. If you like this one, give me a thumbs up. This makes a beautiful presentation box and I would love to see your makes and your ideas with this die set and what you can come with it up with it, especially if you're using it in your home decor and with Christmas coming up too. So I have my Paper Crafting with Helen Griffin Facebook group if you want to join that and share your makes on there absolutely wonderful group over there and it's just full of ideas too so thank you very much for joining me today and i'll see you again next time <laughs>